towards Orlando and I got a phone call and it was Brother John and we was talking on Facebook and after uh, we talked I said it's amazing that they're so many miles away and yet we just connected uh, like that and and uh, uh, it's wonderful to have that kindred spirit and to have a part and know that we're part of the same family and I just praise the Lord for his grace and for his help that he gives and and uh, brother we appreciate you and your family and the faithful work that you're doing over there and our adversary does everything to try to discourage us to try to get our focus off and he told me so many times he said pastor we're going through some tough trials he said but we we're going to be faithful we're going to keep our eyes on the lord we're going to keep on trusting him and we're going to keep on praising him and uh, i'm thankful that uh, that uh, the lord gives us that kind of resolve in our hearts i praise his name no it's not been easy but the lord certainly has been faithful i praise his name brother you come preached our hearts tonight whatever the lord's laid on your heart for this hour and uh, we be excited to hear from heaven Good to go. Amen. I love this brother down on the back there. <laughs> Doing a good job. Well, I'm grateful again for the wonderful privilege to be in the house of God. And thank you for your prayers. And thank you for your generosity toward our family at this time for your support over the many years. And thank Pastor Ted for the good lunch. I'm still full. I think I will pass dinner. You know, first I saw a big cup like this. And the woman said, if you like to have Sprite, I say yes. But I, in my mind, I saw a cup this size. I said, Lord, help me. And then they said, we want, I, I will take a whole rock. But that thing was so big. <laughs> but I ate all of it. <laughs> Amen. So you got to really be, help me to pray as I preach tonight. Amen. Continue to pray for the work there in Guyana. We're going to celebrate our 25th. We have started the church, myself and wife, started a Unity Baptist Church 25 years ago. And this July, we're going to have our 25th anniversary. And we have started many other churches. And uh, we're going to have a big crusade. In the crusade, when we have our, on every anniversary service, we have a big crusade. We call it the crusade or revival. And we have teams. We have like four teams from the youths and the, the youth group. And... The youth group now, they're going to have four teams. You have about 50 youths. And so we're going to have maybe 10 or 12 in each group. And they will add some adults from the church to help each team. And we give the team a biblical name. And um, when we had our 20th anniversary, we had how much people there? We had over 1,500 in attendance. How much the, the team that won... How much that team brought? Can you remember? One of the team brought 560 visitors wow. in a couple of days. So we have meetings in the night, and then we have VBS in the day. I, I tried my best to get your pastor to come over. So what I will do, I will invite him from now for the 26th anniversary. Amen. You and your beautiful wife and bring the family. You want to bring a few foods. God, the Lord bless me in a nice home. And I guarantee we're going to take good care of you. You can come before, but we invite you for the 26th anniversary God's Prayer Life next year, July. So pray on it. Let me know. We have this big meeting. You enjoy it. And so we really appreciate you, Pastor Tad. You are indeed a blessing to us. We like, we like, my big brother, I look up to you. I believe you are a great man of God and loves God and loves people. And um, 
I'm thankful for all of that. So pray for the work there in Guyana. There's so many things we are doing that it will take me forever to tell you, but we are doing a lot of good things for God. And the beauty, we are reaching souls. Amen. We had a crusade in just in January. It was January, February, March, or in March, we had 35 made profession. We had 10 baptized. And so the Lord is working. And Guyana is very open. And so we want to start more churches. So pray for us. We are right now in the, in the process of building a new church building. And because of my daughter's situation, we had to... We had a little hole up on it. And we need to raise some funds and so on to, to deal with that. But God is faithful and He's good all the time. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter one. Second Corinthians chapter one. And we will look at a couple of things this evening. And we'll read from verse we'll look at two verses tonight. It's Mother's Day, so we'll send you home early. Amen. We have a good time. He said there, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation. I like the word all there. It's powerful that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort we are with. We ourselves are comforted of God. Father, bless the preach of your word. Help me glorify yourself among us. Hide me in the cross. Touch, speak, minister. This so our loss will get saved. Strengthen our faith and our walk that we not look to the left nor to the right, but you keep our looking unto Jesus the art and finish of faith. Bless us now. Thank you. We praise you and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I tell you the message, the God of all comfort. Suffering has always posed a problem for man. It may be disease, accident, trial, temptation, abuse, death. Job said, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. No matter what the suffering is, every person sometimes who suffers wonders, why me? Why do I have to suffer this affliction? But I want to say tonight that God is not a question or a problem. He is the answer. Amen. Great men in the Bible suffer. Think about all the great men of God. Abraham went through a lot of suffering. He had to sacrifice his only son. King David, think about the problems he had with his family. Because of his sins and their consequences for sin and choices that we have made. And we think about Job, a man of, of, of God, a man who the Bible said was, was righteous and upright and one that should even one that feared God. Think about him. He, he lose everything except his wife. And so, they were all the great men, the apostles, except John, all of them were martyred. Men of God, men that were called, men that were faithful, men that were committed. Think about Paul and Silas. They were in the will of God, preaching the word of God, and they were locked up. But at midnight, they sang praises. To God they pray and sang praises. Amen. And because of the steadfastness, because of the consistency, because of the determination, because of their love for God, the Philippian Jalen's entire family came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Think about how God can use our trials 
to bring others to Christ. Amen. The Bible said in John 16, 33, Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. He said, In the world ye shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. He said, I have overcome the world. We look at verse 3 in our text. It said there, he said, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. I love that verse. It said, God is the Father of mercies. Think about that. And the God of all comfort. The word mercies means compassion. Pity and mercy. It means looking upon people in need and having compassion and mercy upon them. Know that God is not the God of mercies, but the Father of mercies. Wow. His very nature and behavior toward us is that of a father, not of a God. He is a father, a father who is merciful and compassionate and who showers his mercy upon us. And compassion upon us. Know that the word mercies is plural. It didn't say the father of mercy. It said the father of mercies. You see, God does not show mercy just once, not just here and there. God shower his mercy upon us continuously. Every day, the Bible said, because it is of the Lord mercies that we are not consumed. We look at our eyes and I say, we doesn't deserve the blessings of God. We deserve to die and we deserve to go to hell for all eternity. And it's because of the mercies of God, because the God is good and God is faithful and he's a wonderful, gracious, long-suffering God that we are saved by his grace and we are on our way to heaven and we can sing, oh, there is victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. We can sing with confidence that he has prepared a mansion for us in glory. And our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. It is all the mercies and the goodness of God. What a blessing God is unwilling that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. So he is a father of mercies and the God of all what? Comfort. The word comfort means to be by the side of another. What a comfort to know God is always by our side. You know, I'm thankful God bless me with a good wife. She's always by my side. But she's not always by my side for 24 hours. But God is always there. And so the word means to be by the side of another, to relieve and support, the word comfort means to give solace. It means consolation and encouragement. There is the idea of strength and enablement, a confidence. It consoles and relieves a person, but it strengthens him at the same time. It charges a person to go out and face the world. Wow. And so it doesn't matter what we face or what we're going through. We can still face the world because God is on our side. And he is with us. And that is what makes the difference. The psalmist said, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? He said, I will fear no evil. Why? He was comforted, for thou art with me. Wow, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In the word comfort, you can find that word comfort ten times. The same Greek meaning for the word comfort ten times in Second Corinthians chapter one, verse three through seven. You see, the word comfort is the same word that is used for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given the title the Comforter by Christ. And so we have the comforter lives in us, dwells in us, abides in us. 
John 14, 15, go there if you have the time. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. And so the comforter is, will abide with us forever. He lives in us. We can never lose the Holy Spirit. That's a false doctrine. Some believe when you sin, you lose the Holy Spirit. And some believe you get peace of the Holy Spirit. You get the whole of the Holy Spirit. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God lives in us. And those that are saved and are born again have the Holy Spirit. You cannot lose the Holy Spirit. You can quench the Holy Spirit. You can grieve the Holy Spirit. He said that he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even a spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. He said, I'll come to you. Amen. Wow. We can find comfort. In time of tribulation, loneliness, discouragement, time of sickness, I am comforting myself with the word of God. Amen. Divine comfort and its great purpose is the theme of our text. Now write this down for me. First I want to look at the power to comfort. He said, who comforted us? You see, God has the power to bring comfort to us. When we're experiencing troubles. Not as a source of comfort. He said who? God is the great comforter. Just because you do not have comfort in your troubles. Does not mean God is not able to comfort you. But it means you have not sought his comfort. A great doctor may have the skill to make you well. But if you do not seek his help. He cannot heal you. That doesn't mean the great doctor cannot heal you, but it means you have not sought his help. We are in America and we step over our faith and we're going down to this Nemours and we believe that the doctor there are going to help us. Through the help of God. God is leading us. We need to seek a good doctor. We are all going to pray for Lizzie. We believe in a miracle and God is able, but at the same time we need to be wise. We need to seek a good doctor. You see, God has the power to comfort you in your troubles. Seek him for help, not the bottle or the needle or, or booze or all the drugs and all the things out there. People think they can find comfort in pleasure, in sex, in, in drugs, in, in all this stuff, especially the young people are involved in. You cannot find these things does not give you comfort. Sin is just a pleasure for a time. You can enjoy it, but just for a time. It cannot give you satisfaction and give you the peace and the comfort that you can find in the God of all comfort. Amen. What a comfort it is to know that our God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, is the Father of mercies. Ever waiting like the Father of the repentant prodigal to come running to meet us. Arms open wide to receive us, to embrace us, and restore us with the ring and the robe, the shoes and the fatted calf. God is waiting. He wants to receive us. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, casting all your care upon him. For he cared for you. He's the God of all comfort. This is to say he has an absolute monopoly on it. All true and lasting comfort comes from him. Everything is going to be all right with the Lord. Be of good cheer. He said, it is I. Be not afraid. The wind is blowing contrary. The boat, the water is rough. You know what amazes me when the world are going through a storm? And the, the, the water is rough. And the wind is blowing. They don't have no one with them. But Jesus is always in the boat. Amen. We always have Jesus. That is what makes a difference. 
We need to see that. We need to believe that. We need to believe that by faith. Take God at his word. It was a God of all comfort that Jesus assured his disconsolate disciples that although he was, in, he was indeed going away, he will send them one who will be to them indeed another comforter. It is as a God of all comfort that he, our Lord Jesus Christ, now sits on his Father's throne, where? In heaven as our great high priest. Touched indeed with what? The feeling of our infirmities. We need to believe that. Amen. Amen. I say to you tonight, God is a source of comfort. But let us go quickly as we move into the message. We see the sight of comfort. Notice it said here, he said, who comforted us all. There's no trouble in which God cannot give comfort. Think about it all. Think about everyone here tonight. Yes. Thank you. Oh. God is not only to comfort me and Brother Todd or our sister here or this brother, but every person in this church tonight, Amen. Yes. every believer all over the world, Dead disease, disappointment. There are times when trouble hit us so hard that you wonder if we'll ever have peace and joy again. But God can give give comfort in all our troubles. You know, many troubles are beyond our, our beyond the ability of the world to comfort us. I say, if you're a Christian, we might go through some troubles that it is beyond our ability, and the world cannot help you, but only God. There are some things we may have the world of money, we might have all the contacts. But the bottom line, only God can help us. Think about Nebuchadnezzar, wise man who could not recall or interpret his dream. You see, the world is unable to comfort, but God is never unable to comfort you. He comforts us in all our trials and sufferings. We do not have to bear a single trial alone. Yes. I don't care what is it or what all of us are going through. We don't have to bear it alone. God is there with us. He is our born and bearer. For one moment, we don't have to suffer alone. He is with us. Yes, sir. Yes, he is. Can you imagine that? That he is a very present help. In times of trouble, God is there. The sufficiency of comfort. God, the sight of comfort, all and comforted us. You see, God gives comfort when the world cannot. I say tonight, when you have Christ, you have God, you have everything. I'm amazed tonight that God alone is enough to meet every need and to comfort us and to give us grace and give us strength and give us power and enablement. You want peace, come to God. You want strength, come to God. You need help, come to God. You need encouragement, come to God. You're lonely, come to God. Come to him. You're weak, come to him. You're struggling with sins, with, with, with things in your life, in your marriage, with your children. You have a financial need. Oh, he is still Jehovah Jireh. And we'll give you the last point in the message. Some preacher have a three-point message. I give you a two-point one. Praise Mother's Day. We see the power of comfort, but we want to look at the purpose of comfort. 
He said, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith yourselves are comforted of God. Amen. You see, God does not bless us for our own selfish gain, but to be a blessing to others. I can say that every member of this church has been a blessing to me. They've reached me, give, pray, it's brother, we're praying for you. Notice the enablement to comfort, that we may be able to comfort. God prepares us adequately to serve him. Some of the preparation may be very painful, however. He puts us through some painful troubles so we can help those who are experiencing like troubles. I think about lazy and sudden in January, this whole thing in four or five months, it's changed our entire life. And as a human, I wonder what's going on. How can we deal with this and deal with all the churches and all that we're doing? And God slapped me in my head and said, you know what, I'm still God. This is not your work, this is my work. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God said, trust me, look to me, depend on me. I look at it. And then the Lord said, we are opening an orphanage soon. Maybe God is preparing us because we might have children like that. Or even worse. So God is preparing us to deal with other children and to have compassion on them and to help them. I don't know what God is doing, but he's preparing us for something big. And we ought to be ready. Our family ought to be ready. God is preparing us for something big. The word tribulation means to be weighed down exceedingly. This situation seems like it is weighing us down. It, it is, is tying us. The word tribulation means to be pressed and crushed. When I look at my daughter and she had 28 seizures, it crushed me. It broke me. I cry every time. Every time I have to, my wife got to wake her up at 6 o'clock in the morning in a deep sleep. And she got to drink this big, big tablet. It, it broke my heart every, every day. I'm crushed and I'm pressed. I'm weighed by all of this. And I look at her and she, she, today wasn't a good day for her and she didn't eat two, two fries and drink musi a cup of milk for the entire day. I'm broken. And so it means to be pressed and crushed. Sometimes things can crush us. It can weigh us down. The word, it is a picture of a beast of burden being crushed beneath a load that is just too heavy. It is a picture of a person having a heavy weight placed on his breast and being pressed and crushed to the point that he feels he's going to die. And a lot of times we go through trials and hardship and it seems like we're not going to make it. We call the preacher and say, preacher, you know, you don't know what I'm going to do. I don't think I'm going to make it this Sunday. I don't think I'm, I'm going, to, going to be alive. We're so broken and weighed on and crushed. You see, God's purpose in, in comforting us is to make us a testimony to others. God comforts us so we can comfort others who are suffering, not to laugh them and make fun of them and badmouth them and call up everybody and tell them, oh, no, God is not pleased with it. God strengthens us so we can strengthen others. And we are not here to judge people. Sometimes when people go through hard times, we say, oh, God is judging them. We are not God to judge people. You see, God strengthens us so we can strengthen others through trials. God carries us through trials so we can carry others who are suffering. God helps so that we can help others. God encourages us so we can encourage others. We see the enablement to comfort. And lastly, we see the exhortation to comfort. That 
we may be able to comfort. You see, I want to say this is deep now. Stay with me. God does not want us sitting around doing nothing. He has work for all of us to do. And you know one of those work is to comfort people. What will it take for you to just call up a sister or a brother that you didn't see for a long time and call him and say, you know, I'm praying for you. I want to know, brother, we miss you, sister, we miss you, we love you. And it doesn't matter what you're going through, we are here for you. We will pray for you, we will help you, we will do what it takes to be there for you. That means a lot. Smile at somebody. Give someone a hug. Let them know how much God loves them and how much he loves them. We're here. God placed us here. We have a work to do. The fact that God gives us troubles to help us comfort others tells us that in our text, God is exhorting believers to do some comforting. You know, you know this? No one can give comfort like a believer. You see how I know that? Because he knows a portion of comfort. Yes. Right. Right. And he knows the power of comfort. I want to say tonight, there's so many Christians out there discouraged. Look at your preacher, great man of God, but at times he gets discouraged. Do we think it is easy? I'm pastoring now maybe 27 years. Do we think it is easy for the man of God to go up there when people criticize his wife and criticize his children? The same fair people you have to love and you have to pray for them. I don't know if that happens here, but that's a tough thing to do. I give my entire life to the ministry. And everybody in the church, I love them. They're precious. They're important to me. But at times we get discouraged. Sure. At times we feel lonely. At times we don't know who we can go to, who we can trust, who we can tell our problems to. But we tell God we can come to Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. But I want to say all of this. At times, all of us at times get discouraged. And discouragement is one of Satan's tool. And that's, I think, one of his greatest tools. Because when you're discouraged, you don't even want to come to church. When you're discouraged, you don't even want to pray. When you're discouraged, you don't even want to sing in the choir. You don't even want to go soul winning. You don't even want to give. And I don't want to say tonight that in make it the ministry, a ministry tonight, to be a comfort to people. I want to thank you that I have do not have words enough to thank this church for all that you have done for my family and how you have been a comfort to us. You may not know that. And your comfort and your encouragement and your help and your prayer, I believe will take us through this journey. Yeah. We, we don't know, I don't know what we're going to face. You don't know. This is a strange, the foreign country we're here driving out of. We don't know. But we serve the one who knows. Amen. Amen. Yes, that's right. Right. You know why we are here? Because we have trust the Lord. Right. And we know that he will not fail us. Right. And we're going to have victory in Jesus. God going to see us through all of this. Yes, he will. I'll come back and we will, we will give the testimonies. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But you know what? Let us be a comfort to one another. Father, thank you for your presence and for your word. Lord, you said in your word that you will not give us how much we cannot bear. But Lord, you said that we are more than conquerors and nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. 
strengthen my faith and my family's faith for this journey. I ask you to bless every family represented here. Bless Pastor Todd, encourage him and his family. I pray for this church and every need. And all the people that are hurting and suffering, that they will find comfort in your promises, in your presence, in your power, in your provision. Strengthen our faith. And we love you and praise in Jesus' name. Amen.